that's it. No more camping, no more tents, no more sleeping on the sidewalk. Those days are over here in Florida. In fact, on Wednesday this week, Governor DeSantis just signed a bill into law which banned homeless people from sleeping in parks on the sidewalk and in other public places. Looks like he's taking the lead from Miami Beach where I live because we were the first city in Florida to basically outlaw this as far as I know. And now it's gonna apply to the entire state. And I couldn't agree more with uh, the statement on this one. DeSantis said, you should not be accosted by a homeless person. You should be able to walk down the street and live your life. You know, that's the worst thing about it, guys. When people are just hanging out and smoking weed, doing drugs, drinking, whatever they're doing, and then they sit there and harass people, especially women walking by and stuff. Nobody wants that. People don't feel safe with that kind of stuff going on, and it shouldn't be allowed. And now it's not gonna be anymore. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't kick in until October 1st. So there's a long time, there's a pretty big gap between when this bill was signed and when it actually starts rolling out across the state. Basically, people are gonna have a couple choices from that one. You can either go to a homeless shelter or go to jail. And in some areas, if they don't have enough shelter beds, what they're planning on doing is creating you know, basically homeless camps in a controlled area, but they will have to provide them with security, sanitation, and behavioral health services to people who are staying at the camp. So it's not like just some out of control free for all. And in order to force different cities throughout Florida to do this, who maybe are against this, starting on January 1st, 2025, the Florida Attorney General is gonna be able to sue any local city for not doing it. And then from there, they have five days to cure the alleged violation. The city or the county would have to pay attorney's fees and costs. So probably wouldn't be in their best interest to defy this law. And it's true, like this is really the right thing to do, guys, because you know, one thing that I always hate about going to California, even though I love spending my summer there, is that certain areas you'll walk down the street and there's just camps and people on the street and all of this and you have to worry if you know they're psychotic they're going to stab you with some kind of needle and get aids like who knows what could happen right and just the thought that that could happen is scary right and nobody really wants to deal with that i know i certainly don't but the state's going to start off by offering 10 million dollars total for the state's 67 counties to comply with the law and i don't think they're trying to help homeless people you know some of the critics of this are saying oh this doesn't help homeless people you know they're not really trying to help homeless people like no they're trying to help the tax-paying citizens that pay for these homeless people to stay on the street that's what that's who they're trying to help they're trying to help the quality of life of people paying the actual tax bill go up, which should be a good thing. According to the mayor of Miami-Dade County, she says that we should be able to comply with this new law here without needing to spend additional funds because we're already spending $85 million a year on homeless programs just in Miami-Dade County. And we do have shelter beds, we have places for people to go here. It's just a matter of people not wanting to go and you know choosing to sleep on the street. Well, those days are gonna be over pretty soon. Now, according to the 2023 stats, we have about almost 31,000 homeless people throughout the entire state of Florida, which I guess is nothing when you look at California. I mean, just Los Angeles alone has more than double that in just one county. So, you know, comparatively speaking, it's a drop in the bucket. That's still a lot of people without a place to live. But the thing is, guys, the whole problem has gotten completely out of control in places where they just allow this. Like, I couldn't believe it. When I was in Denver, Colorado last time, that was in 2021, okay? Downtown Denver looks like downtown Los Angeles now with all the homeless tents and just people camping out everywhere now. I was completely surprised to see that because I'd never really been to Denver before and I had no idea it was actually that bad. Now, Miami Beach was the first place, I think, to do this. So far in 2023, they only arrested 20 people under this new law and most of these people were sleeping on the beach. But I think they need to step it up and do more at enforcing the law, guys, because I can ride my bike down the boardwalk all the way down the South Beach, and I can spot at least 
10 homeless people sleeping on the boardwalk somewhere, they're not taking them away. You know, they're, they shouldn't be able to sleep there. A lot of these people are, you know, up to no good. You can see them drinking and smoking and doing things over there that they shouldn't be doing in public. And I'm not saying that everybody who's homeless is, is a criminal or is, or is doing something wrong. But the fact of the matter is, you know, people shouldn't be able to sleep in public places. You know, it's not right. It degrades the quality of our public spaces. And some people will call it a political issue, which, you know, in this case, maybe it is because Florida's doing this and other states aren't. But I'll tell you what, guys, if you are paying taxes and you are paying for streets to be clean and safe for your family to walk on and not have to worry about being accosted by somebody who's sleeping there or has a tent on the street, I think that qualifies as the tax dollars going towards, towards good use versus just letting that happen. People still have to pay taxes and have to worry about stuff like that. So I just feel like it's a common sense issue, but a lot of people are going to tear it apart and say, oh, it's, it's this and that. Da, 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 da. And Miami Dade supposedly has been doing a good job at helping people get into permanent housing, by the way, you know, when they take them off the streets. Ever since 1992, uh, we actually created the nation's first dedicated funding source for homeless services using a 1% food and beverage tax. And since then, the county has gone from more than 8,000 homeless people to less than 1,000. So. You know, homelessness is not a huge issue here. It's not like readily visible. Like you guys can see on my walks here, maybe it can count on one hand how many times we've seen somebody homeless in one of my videos here in Florida. It'll be interesting to see how it goes this summer in California. But you know, I stay in nice areas over there just like here, and you really don't see a lot of homeless there either. It's just in areas where they let it spiral out of control that is very visible. But it's just like the stark difference of the way of doing things these days is kind of mind-blowing, you know? I just saw a story how they literally arrested a homeowner in New York for trying to get a squatter out of her home. And meanwhile, here in Florida, we just passed a law making it easier than ever to get squatters out of your home. <laughs> I mean, the contrast is like unbelievable guys you can't make this stuff up so in case you guys haven't heard this story yet in new york city a person who has occupied a, a property for more than 30 days cannot be removed by the landlord without a judicial eviction okay and this is due to the squatters rights laws they have over there and it's intended to protect tenants from predatory landlords but what it really does is it allows any yahoo to just move into your property when it's vacant and make some sort of claim on the place and say that they're allowed to live there which is completely not right now i will say that when it comes to squatting guys like i can see how there should be some sort of squatters rights like i'm talking like long term like say you find an abandoned house somewhere and you're living in that house for five years and repairing it and taking care of it as, as your own and nobody claimed it, then sure, maybe that house should eventually belong to you, okay? I think that's pretty fair. Five years, that's a long time to live in an abandoned house and if no one's checking up on it in that amount of time, then maybe you can take over, right? Maybe the law can be on your side. But 30 days? I mean, that is a joke. 30 days, guys, come on. So at the end of February, this woman went to a, a house that her parents, your parents used to own, they passed away. So the house was vacant, obviously. And she went there with a news crew and she walked in to find two guys that were living in the house. And they said they've only been there for a couple of days. And one guy came in and said, oh no, I have a lease. And she said, well, I'm gonna change the locks because you guys aren't supposed to be here. And they called the police. The police showed up. You know what the police told her? They said, if you change the locks, then this could lead to your arrest. Like, huh? So locking somebody out of my own house that I can prove that I own is gonna cause me to be arrested and these guys get to walk free? I mean, they're literally letting the criminals run the show in places like New York and arresting the, the tax paying owner of this property think about how backwards that is guys like just like i was talking about earlier with these homeless laws like people are worried about oh this doesn't protect homeless people no it protects people who are actually paying their bills and paying the taxes and allowing the city services to actually continue making a contribution to society 
okay? So this woman goes, I may end up in handcuffs today, but if a man shows up here and says I have illegally evicted him, I said, let him take me to court as I have been told to take him to court because I'm not leaving my house. So good for this woman for standing up the, for her right to own her own house, you know? Who would have thought that it would come down to this? I mean, in the old days, guys, rewind is like 100, 150 years, you try to take somebody's house, you're just gonna get shot. They're just gonna kill you, <laughs> leave you there, you know, take you out. And no one's gonna do a damn thing about it because that's just the way it should be. So places like this are gonna have to start learning justice the hard way, I think. And um, I'm glad that Florida is taking the initiative in this because here, not only do we just make uh, being homeless and sleeping on the streets and camping on the streets illegal, but we also made it far easier to take squatters out of your property that don't belong here. House Bill 621 permits police to remove squatters without a lease authorized by the property owner and adds criminal penalties. Landlords under the current law typically have to wade through a long and expensive legal process to remove squatters. So for a long time, things haven't been much better here in Florida, but that's all changing now. So this basically gives the police the immediate ability to evict squatters. It also charges squatters with a misdemeanor for squatting or presenting a false lease. And then it becomes a felony if they do $1,000 or more in property damage. So people like to make fun of Florida. You know, we are, we're actually the butt of the joke a lot of times with a lot of different things. But you know what we're doing here, guys? We're enforcing the law. And I'm sure a lot of people that live here in Florida are very happy to hear about this. I know I certainly am. And one last thought on this, it's not like I don't have any sympathy or compassion for somebody who's homeless. It's just that, you know, look at how nice this park is right here, guys. Check, take a look at this. This is a perfect example here. This park is beautiful. You have kids playing on the playground. You have, you know, residents just walking around, elderly. Can you imagine how disgusting this park would be if it had homeless tents everywhere and people taking dumps here and, uh, you know, throwing their trash everywhere, being belligerent. Do you think this would be a nice place to walk through if that was the case? No. But if you go to places where that exists, like Denver and Los Angeles and Seattle, it's terrible. And that alone should make any level-headed person think that this is the right thing to do. You guys heard in my video the other day about how your car, if it has a navigation system, is now probably spying on you and selling your information to insurance companies to help raise your rates. And the reason this is possible is because of data brokers. And data brokers collect your information with or without your knowledge, and that's why I partnered with Delete Me. Delete Me is a subscription service that will remove your personal information from these data data broker websites. And honestly, the less information that's out there about you that's public these days, the better, if you ask me. I mean, look at my report here. All these data brokers with my info that is in the progress of being removed is completely out of control, okay? And Delete Me is also doing a great job showing all the places that have already been removed this quarter. You can see as of my most recent report that just came out a couple of days ago, I had an additional 76 listings erased from the internet. People that had my name, my phone number, my address, if different information about my family that's nobody else's business, but somehow these data brokers collect this info, guys. So. If you're like me and you want this information removed from the internet, go ahead and join Delete Me today using my link down in the description below at joindeleteme.com slash board and arrow and get 20% off your order. Now here's something interesting with real estate. Take a look at this infographic here. This says that this could be your potential growth in household wealth over the next five years just from purchasing a $400,000 home in January of 2024. So they're saying your net worth is gonna go up by on about another $83,000, $84,000 over the next five years just if you were to buy a $400,000 house in January this year. Now, I'm not saying that couldn't be true because it very well could be true, especially if inflation keeps raging. However, charts like this only ever assumes and only ever paints the picture to home buyers that prices only ever go up, which is actually not true. But like I mentioned in my last housing crash video, 
This time could be different in the sense that the crash could come in the form of inflation really causing the real crash. You know, we might not see home prices come down in real nominal terms, but when adjusted for inflation, they go negative. You know, if inflation starts ticking back up to five, six percent a year or more, like Peter Schiff, he just predicted we're going to have double digit inflation by 2025. That's next year, guys. I don't know if that's true or not. But he's been right about a lot of other things, so let's see. If your home is going up in value 2 or 3% a year, but inflation is raging at 10% a year, then you're still losing 7% of the value of that home, and you're losing 10% of the value of your dollar. So it's even worse with cash. But the worst thing about infographics like this is realtors share things like this on their social media, and they use this to you know, convince people that they should buy a home. And unfortunately, what it does is it creates FOMO and more fear with home buyers, okay? And then it pushes them into doing something that they shouldn't do, like getting an adjustable rate mortgage. In fact, according to a new poll from first time home buyers, 84% of first time home buyers plan to borrow for their home purchase. 23% of them are considering an adjustable rate mortgage right now, which doesn't even make any sense because adjustable rate mortgages aren't even that much cheaper than 30 year loans right now. It's negligible, the difference in cost, but yet 23% are considering them. In 2023, only 12% were considering them. So why are so many more home buyers considering an adjustable rate mortgage in such a short period of time? It's because they see information like this that scares the crap out of them in order to go out and buy a home. You know, if, if you don't, you're never gonna own a home. That's kind of like the scare tactic that agents and realtors and mortgage brokers are able to use still to convince people to buy. If you don't buy one now, well, look at that. You're gonna lose out on $83,000 of equity growth over the next five years. Like, who's guaranteeing that? Nobody can guarantee that. And not only that, but it puts people in a position who probably aren't financially healthy enough to, to, to buy to actually go ahead and make the leap anyways because 79% uh, of low to moderate income people say that they're confident in their ability to buy a home, but yet they don't even know that they can get uh, down payment assistance. They don't know anything really about the process, but they say that they're confident that they can buy a home even though they really don't have the income. And people like that are usually loaded up with debt. And I've always been on the fence with this sort of stuff because on the one hand, as a first time home buyer, you know, you can build wealth if you buy the right property at the right time. But these people just use these scare tactics to make it seem like that you're just never gonna own a home if you don't buy one today. And let's face it guys, if you're already struggling with debt, you know, if your credit score is anywhere below 680, you know, you're probably not in the best financial position to purchase a house. That's just being real with you. If you have multiple debt payments right now, you have a car payment, you have a student loan payment, you have credit card bills, you have some buy now pay later loans, and you have a credit score below 700, you're not in the position to buy a house because you already can't even afford the lifestyle you're living right now because everything that you do and are paying for is financed. You know, if it wasn't for all those loans, you wouldn't have any of this stuff. And then to think that you're in good enough shape to go out there and buy a house is just trickery from graphs like this. You know, the reality is Americans really can't afford the lifestyle they're living at all anymore, you know, because of how much everything is financed. If it wasn't for debt, if it wasn't for credit cards, if it wasn't for auto loans, if it wasn't for mortgages and all this stuff that drag you into debt, people wouldn't have any of this stuff. Nobody would be able to afford this stupid car. Nobody would be able to afford living in their house. And I try to practice what I preach, guys. Like, I own my car outright. I don't have any credit card payments. I don't have any student loan bills. I don't have any debt, actually, besides my mortgage debt. And then you could say, oh, well, Michael, that means you can't afford your house. Well, I could actually probably pay off my mortgage if I wanted to, but I'm not going to because I want to save the money, first of all, for upcoming opportunities I think we're gonna see over the next couple of years in this economy. Also, why pay it off when the mortgage rate is basically beating inflation at this point? You know, it really doesn't make sense to pay it off. So I'm gonna keep the mortgage for now because I think it's just a smarter financial move. Plus, I get to deduct the interest I pay on the loan up to $10,000 from my taxes every year. So that helps. And I realize not everybody can do this, but I'm just saying, don't be fooled 
by these things that make it look like you're never going to be able to own a home if you're truly not ready guys you know if you're ready you're not you know if you've been responsible with your finances and you're doing what it takes to get ahead or if you're just out there putting everything on the charge card and buying things you can't afford you know who you are Now we all saw how the Fed didn't raise the interest rates at the last meeting. Surprise, surprise. Who could have saw that coming? But I still think they should be raising rates, guys. And you know why? Because after we just got the most recent CPI reading in February, inflation literally jumped to 3.2%. And core inflation is still at 3.8%, which is almost double the Fed's target rate. And February of 2024 was also the 35th consecutive month with inflation above 3% right now. And so with these figures, the Fed literally can't afford a pivot. They can't afford to change their strategy right now and lower rates. If you think things are expensive now and you think inflation is bad now, just imagine how that's going to look if they pivot in June like everybody thinks they're going to after this last meeting. And I would not be taking Jerome Powell's words as gospel right now because last year, he signaled that there was going to be numerous rate cuts in 2024 beginning as early as March. Well, look, we're already in March, no rate cuts, and probably not even one coming at least until June, if there's going to be any at all this year. But some people are always asking, well, where's the good news in all of this, Michael? You know, you always talk about all the bad things. Well, here's some good news for you. The good news is that the net worths for people who are doing well right now are at all-time highs. The stock market prices are at all-time highs. Real estate prices are at all-time highs. I don't think that's a good thing unless you own real estate and you love paying property taxes. But anyways, some people think that's a good thing. And you can earn 5% interest on your cash in the bank or in T-bills or whatever you choose to do with that money. So there's the good news, right? But here's something to remember, guys. The highs never last with anything. These were all all-time highs that you just heard me say, but highs don't last. Whether you're talking about drugs, whether you're talking about the economy, whether you're talking about the tide of the ocean coming in and out, the highs never last. So enjoy the high while it lasts. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.